to our scripture, which is from the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. And before we read, let us pray. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the reading and understanding of your word. Bless it to our hearts, that it might grow there, and that it might help transform us into who you have called us to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. First, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, starting with verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you did for me. And then from Luke chapter 10, starting with verse 36, and Jesus says, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? And the expert in the law replied, The one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. <clears throat> the man went into a hospital. It was run by nuns. It's called the Sisters of Mercy. But they weren't very merciful because before he could even get out of the hospital, one of the nuns was in his room asking him how he was going to pay his bill. And uh, he said, well, I can't afford this. And so she said, well, do you have any family members who can help you out? Maybe a mother or a father? No, no, they passed on. Well, you have an aunt or an uncle or somebody who can help you out? No, no, don't really. He said, really, the only kid I have is a sister, and she's like you. She's a spinster nun. <laughs> and this made the nun kind of upset. And she says, sir, nuns are not considered spinsters. We are married to God. And he said, my sister too? And she said, yes. She goes, well, he goes, well, there you go. Just give the bill to my brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so while the sisters of mercy may not have been very merciful in this story, mercy is nonetheless a central component of who we're supposed to be as Christians. And we see that, of course, in the story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus tells and I know you know that passage well, so I'll not dwell on particulars, just give a general retelling of it. But of course, a legal scholar who deals with these issues all day comes and asks Jesus, how might I inherit eternal life? And so Jesus asks him, well, how do you read the law? What does it say? And the lawyer summarizes what's called the, the summary of the law of God. You see it two, three times in Scripture that all God's law can be summarized in the statements, love God with all your being, who you are, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, well, do that, and you'll live. But then the lawyer wants to get a little nitpicky. He says, well, who is my neighbor? And you know, he wants to know who he has to love and who he cannot love. Because, you know, it's, it's, he doesn't want to love everybody. And so Jesus tells the parable in response to that. And says that there was a Jewish man traveling down a dangerous road, Who's waylaid by thieves? He stripped and left bleeding and dying in a ditch on the side of the road. And at two different times, two different religious temple workers, one a priest, one a Levite, happened by, and they see the man laying there. And you would think that religious workers, since they work for God, would be the first ones to stop and help the man. But neither the priest nor the Levite do. They not only don't help him, they go to the other side of the road to go around him, and they go on and just leave him there for dead. Now, we don't know why they did that. Uh, it could have been many reasons. It might have been they didn't care. It might have been that they thought the danger was still there, those thieves could still be hiding and get them. 
Or it may be a purity issue. They're going to work in the temple, and if they touch somebody who was bleeding or even dead, then they wouldn't be able to perform their temple duties until they went through the rites of purification, which took time. And so they didn't help. But along comes a Samaritan, and as you know, Samaritans and Jews did not get along well. They disliked each other. Each of them thought of themselves as the true people of Israel, and they disparaged the other. And so when a Samaritan comes along in an area that's completely Jewish, you would think that you know, he wouldn't stop and help the man, surely. Uh, but he is the one who does stop. Not only does he risk his life if the thieves are still around, but he also pours out what he has, his own uh, ointments on the man, which are fairly expensive. And he takes the man and binds up his wounds and takes him to an inn and pays for the man to stay there and recuperate and says, if there's any more costs, I'll take care of it. And so he goes above and beyond the call of duty to help out this man. And so after telling this, this story, Jesus asks the lawyer, who then is the neighbor to the man who fell into the ditch? Now the lawyer doesn't want to say Samaritan. He can't bring himself even to say the word Samaritan. And so he says, but it's more telling even, uh, he answers in a way that is even more powerful. He says, the one who showed mercy. And so Jesus says, well then, go and do likewise. And that's the part I want to look at as that last part about loving our neighbor as ourselves. We know that that's part of the law uh, of God that covers the, the other laws. And that is we must love our neighbor as ourselves. And as we see in this telling, part of loving our neighbor is showing mercy to our neighbor, having mercy upon them. Now, what is mercy? If you look it up in a dictionary, it will tell you that it is having compassion or forbearance on somebody, particularly somebody who may be in your power to do that or not. Like the priest and the Levite and the Samaritan all had it in their power to help this man or not. And so that's one uh, definition. The other is to have compassionate treatment to those who are in distress. But notice that mercy is more than just an attitude. It's more than just a mode of thinking. Mercy is action. Mercy is actually doing something that shows compassion. We see that clearly in the Good Samaritan. We don't know what the priest and the Levite were thinking. They may actually have been thinking that poor man, I have compassion for him in the heart. I wish I could help him, but for some reason they did not. You know, we don't know. They could have been thinking that, maybe not. But in the end, they didn't do anything, which, you know, they might as well not have come by at all. As far as the man was concerned, they left him in the ditch dying as he had been before. But then the Samaritan, on the other hand, does show mercy. He showed mercy as the lawyer recognized, the one who showed mercy. And so Jesus says, then go and do likewise. So mercy is an action. And how do we show mercy? Well, of course, there's many different ways to do that. Theologians have categorized these into a couple of lists. That's what theologians are good for. They like to make lists of stuff. And so, uh, and there'll be a test on this afterwards, so remember these lists. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're, they're divided into two, two different types of mercy. You know, first are the corporal works of mercy, those works of mercy which meet somebody's body, bodily or physical or material needs. And those are things uh, like feeding the hungry, giving water to the thirsty, clothing those who are naked, uh, shelter to those who are homeless, visiting those who are sick, visiting those who are imprisoned or held rent captive and ransomed them, and to bury the dead. And these are all found in various scriptures, but the bulk of those, we know, uh, though they're found in other places, we can see them gathered in one place in the other passage of scripture we read for this morning, where it says that Jesus, on the day of judgment, uh, will have people before the throne of judgment of the Lord and will say, you know, come all you who are blessed and enter into the, the kingdom which was founded for you before the foundation of the world. Uh, and come in because when I was hungry, you fed me. And when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And when I was naked, you clothed me. And when I was a stranger, you invited me in. And when I was sick or in jail, you visited me. And people will say, Lord, when did we do these things for you? We never saw you. 
how did we do these things? And he said, well, if you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, then you have done it for me as well. And conversely, if we haven't done it to the least of these, then it was like seeing him in need and not helping him. And so we can see that this is central uh, to part of our duties as a Christian is to show mercy. Now, beyond the corporal works of mercy, which we mentioned, the physical needs, there are spiritual works of mercy. And these are to instruct the ignorant, admonish the sinners, counsel the doubtful, to bear patiently with those who wrong us, to forgive those who offend us or sin against us, to comfort those who are afflicted, and to pray for others. Now, anytime a church or a Christian does something bad, that's going to be in the news, you know. The good stuff doesn't make it, but the bad stuff does. <laughs> but Christians are often thought of as people who really like the first two things on that list, but not the rest of it so much. The first two things being to instruct the ignorant and to admonish the sinners. You know, I'm going to tell you what to do if you poor sinner waving fingers at people. Um, but we're not to engage in just those two. The works of mercy are all of those things, to counsel, to forgive, to comfort, to pray. So we see that the Lord uh, pays a great deal of attention to that. And we also notice um, that it's often churches, isn't it, that do these things. Uh, like I say, churches get the, the rap when, when they aren't merciful, when they are merciless and full of rules and laws and judgment. But if you look around in the world, when there is trouble in the world and people need feeding and when people need clothes and when people need help, who is it that does it? It's often Christians, aren't it, and churches that do these things. I'll never forget when we had a flood. Uh, Denise and I, and Emily as a little baby, lived through this flood. It wiped out the whole village that we lived in. Our house was one of the two spared because it was on a little hill. Uh, but the first people in there to help were Mennonites who came to help people rebuild. And they, uh, they would rebuild your house for free. All they wanted was the cost of the materials. And they would rebuild with labor what you lost. The first people there were Christians. So they were showing mercy. And we live in a world where the things of God, when they happen like that, seem increasingly to set us apart from the rest of the world that surrounds us. Because the rest of the world is increasingly not really the things of God. The world likes to talk a good game about mercy, but it doesn't show much mercy, does it? The world is often merciless in the way that it treats people. And we've seen that particularly uh, in our country, you know, that politically, whichever side you're on, people have just been merciless to each other uh, all the way through. And so uh, if we show mercy, that's one of those characteristics that set us apart. Uh, and so... You know, we should be those who are willing to go out on them and to show mercy to others, to feed them and clothe them and visit them and comfort them. And I know that you have been doing those things. I've seen that with my own eyes. You were good people. You would give the shirts off your back to people if they needed it. And so let us always remember to be that way. Let us look around and see where mercy needs to be shown and let us show mercy to those around us. And we do that by doing things. They show God's mercy, and that is a witness to others of God's goodness and love. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you have shown us mercy, that you have blessed us so much with your mercy and grace. Help us be such recipients of such, such a great gift from you to turn around and show it to others, to be merciful to others, to love them and to feed them and to clothe them and to forgive them, to show compassion and to be with those who sorrow. Whatever the need may be, help us to do so. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.